For me, in the realm of forms, an island is an oblong landmass set apart from the rest, cut off from civilization, meaning no people. It's always the islands that manage to be free of people which intrigue me the most. What is it about them that are so uninhabitable? Or perhaps even more intriguing, what might people have endured there that kept them from staying? I found this island named Akpatak in the Canadian Arctic, nestled up in the Ungava Bay near the northern tip of Quebec. It's not a particularly welcoming place. The frigid, subarctic temperatures keep anything more than mosses and small plants from growing on the limestone surface. The island is flat and ringed by 500 plus foot cliffs where it meets the waters of the bay. At the bottom of the cliff, the island is skirted with scree slopes. It's as if it was raised up from the ocean, an imposing monolith once submerged. And despite its imposing stature, some do find their way onto this island. There are several large populations of birds known to migrate there. Notably, the thick-billed muir from which the island takes its name. There are also polar bears, who have plenty to eat with the multitude of birds. Walrus and seal can also be found. Most recently, humans have visited in the name of science and oil exploration. All are merely passing through. But in a time long past, this island was home to Dorset people, an Inuit culture. By the early 1900s, they had all moved to the mainland, leaving behind only a trace. I did read that those people practiced cannibalism, but not being able to find any tangible proof, I quickly dismissed it as the kind of dark lore that over time gets woven into a narrative like this. Sometimes it's the short stories with scant details that somehow beg the most for something salacious to be inserted. As I zoomed in and virtually explored this floating plateau, I was simultaneously frustrated and compelled by the inability to make out any features of human settlement remnants. I found myself comically ill-equipped to assess whether this or that cluster of pixels constituted anything recognizable. And yet my imagination soared with a low-res movie playing in my head of a group long ago calling this exposed, harsh rock their home. 